Android? No. It's an iPhone. iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you that having an adapter. <coughs> unless you don't want to do it, then you just <coughs> I know, there's this, when stuff blooms, it's... Do you want a cough drop? I'm okay for right now. No. My voice seems to be okay, but it's just... Morning, Mr. Deitch. Morning, John. How are you? Good. Morning, John. Don't trust me. Janet Tower here for a while. She's here. Janet? She yeah, she's, she's sitting over here on the right. <coughs> Haven't seen her for a while. So. Yeah. Is she still, is she living down in Lake Havasu there? Or where's she? Gail? Oh, oh, Janet, yeah, I think. Janet? I think they, I know they bought a place down there. I think Janet and Gail go to church together when they're down really? there. I think that's right. So I think you're right about that. I thought Gail told me one time they were thinking about moving back up here, but they must have changed their mind because they tend to be up here all the time, but they must have changed their mind now that her dad's in that school. Well, I would love that if they moved back up here. He seems to really like lake life. Like, he seems to, Doug seems to really like the lake life. Like the pictures of the lake and their pool. Oh, like, yeah. It seems yeah. really interesting. But I would love it if they moved back up here. I would love to live by a lake. I would love that. It's like ghost <laughs> so. town. Kick me out, I don't care. God says not do not live in fear, I'm not gonna live in fear. <laughs> I don't think we were meant to breathe our own CO2 for seven hours. <laughs> so I guess we're going to be like, sick? why am I dizzy? That's why they get sick. <laughs> right? Yeah. Never did any of this stuff for the flu. <laughs> flu still kills more people than this thing did. When you look at it worldwide, I don't know how many people, even if it killed three million people worldwide, what is that? Point zero zero some odd people, people in this world? I'm opting out. I will in my 
like to welcome everyone, guests and members alike. Um, my name is John Deitch. I'm filling in for Pastor this morning. Um, he's recuperating from knee surgery. Good news is that was his second knee this year. I don't think he has any left. <laughs> so hopefully he recovers. He'll be back next week. And uh, while I'm happy to always stand in, hopefully he'll be back and be able to take over. Uh, before we start, I um, want to mention we have a second Sunday offering. Again, the basket's in the back. Uh, that will go to the InterVarsity Christian Ministry at Weber State University. And with that, let's begin our call to worship.
Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. Not by my authority, but through God's grace, by the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus and with the healing of the Holy Spirit, I declare that you are freed from the bondage of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hear 
Chapter 2, verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, We make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Gospel this morning comes from John chapter 20. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, was one of the twelve and was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name.
They say that a good sermon is like a biscuit. It's improved with a little shortening. <laughs> so with that in mind, I'll try to be a good baker this morning. <laughs> the cross of the message this morning comes quite literally from the three verses from the reading in 1, chap- in one John chapter 1. Let me read those verses again. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light, in Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light and He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Three verses with a whole lot packed into them, especially when we take them and attempt to apply them to our faith and how we live out that faith. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. The statement seems clear and straightforward, does it not? And from where does the light shine? But from God's Word, and from Jesus, who is proclaimed by John to be the Word of life, and whose life and testimony Validated scripture. Jesus himself says in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And there are many examples of Jesus relying on or quoting scripture. When he was tempted in the desert, Jesus quoted scripture to find strength and to rebuke Satan. At the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus used several references to Scripture to support His teachings. And Jesus also referred to Scripture when teaching about marriage, the Ten Commandments, and prophecies, among other topics. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. Light versus darkness, white versus black, not much room for gray. But what happens when the light reveals that which we do not wish to see? What happens when our own culture, social media, accepted norms, or our own personal circumstances, or even our hearts, are telling us one thing, but Scripture seems to be telling us another? The light becomes more distant, and what is white becomes gray. Marriage Right to life and homosexuality are just some of the topics we have to deal with in today's world. And our own experiences and how these things may touch our own lives can obviously affect our perspective and may bring us into conflict with what the Bible appears to teach. I think for those of us who face this dilemma, where the Bible teaches what seems to be contrary to truth, or at least to truth by our own understanding, that we have a tendency not to necessarily deny Scripture, but to ignore or perhaps just not focus on particular sections of God's Word. And in some extreme cases, depending on the pressures that are pulling on us, we can even attempt, either knowingly or subconsciously, to twist Scripture to support what we want to believe. And for those of us who witness others in this dilemma, it is easy to feel righteous and ready to condemn the sin, if not the sinner. Forgetting that we ourselves have our own conflicts with with which we struggle. Condemn the sin, but not the sinner. I've heard that phrase quoted often, and while it may sound reasonable, I for one choose to condemn neither the sinner nor the sin. When Jesus stopped the stoning of the adulterous woman, saying, let he who is without sin cast the first stone, I heard neither condemnation of the woman nor her actions. To condemn is to judge, and I will leave judgment to the Lord. Rather than judge, I believe that the message from today's reading, to walk in the light as he is in the light, to have fellowship with one another, tells us that we are on this walk of faith together, led by the light of the word, and rather than judge, we should encourage and enlighten others through Bible studies, through prayer, through fellowship, and through example. Rather than judge, 
we should attempt to shed the light of the Word. Make that distant light a little brighter. Help others see the way. Be a beacon to lead others out of the darkness. Bearing in mind always that we may be one of those others that need the leading. Do not use God's Word to condemn, and neither use it to conform your faith, but rather use it to confirm your faith. Let it be a light to shine upon the truth. And one final point. We must remember that we are all God's children, and that we are all in this together. It is in my view no small thing that fellowship is referenced twice in these three verses. Fellowship with Christ in one instance, and fellowship with one another in the other. They are part of the same picture. All of us, each of us, are broken pieces. But being joined together with one another, being joined together by the blood of Christ, purified from all sin, we become a beautiful mosaic. With the blood of Jesus, we have something in common that binds us together. Despite our differences, despite our disagreements, despite our imperfection, despite our sinfulness, with our fellowship and with the atoning sacrifice for our sins and with God's Word, we not only are the wonderful mosaic that is God's church, but we have the light shining on that mosaic to reveal it to the world. Before I conclude today's message, if you'll bear with me, I would like to offer a personal reflection. This week I ran across a couple of zit drives that I haven't seen forever. And scanning through them, on one of them I found a message that I had prepared for March 11, 2011. I hadn't realized that it was that long ago that Pastor Saban trained me as a lay leader and that it has been that long that I have been occasionally standing in to lead worship services when needed. For those of you who have been part of the congregation for those 10 years, thank you for your understanding and patience. For those of you who are newer to the fold, hopefully you have received the benefit of the experience and haven't had to exercise quite as much understanding and patience. In any case, it is always an honor and a privilege to be given the opportunity to deliver the message, although it can also be a very humbling experience. While it is never the intent at the onset of preparing the lesson, more often than not, the message will apply directly to me and will be a lesson that I will need to take home myself. But back to the March 11, 2011 message. It concluded with the following question. What is required to accept God's plan for us in this world even when we can't understand the brokenness, the suffering, and the seeming unfairness all around us? And what is required to be able to accept the truth as given to us in Scripture even when it doesn't make sense, doesn't conform to modern society, or isn't what we want to hear? The answer back then, as it is now, and always will be, is simply and wonderfully faith. Faith grounded in God's Word. I think this is an equally fitting conclusion to today's message. So let us be active in Scripture, not only in turning to God's Word for guidance ourselves, but also in sharing the good news with others. Let us confirm our faith rather than conform it. Let us walk in the light and be God's church. And all God's people said, Amen. Oh
proclaim our faith according to the Nicene Creed. We believe in the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light for the world to come. Amen. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and solitary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to His holy name and with the saints on earth and the host in heaven join in their unending Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, everyone is invited invited to come join in the communion. We will distribute packets that contain both the host and the wine, which is the blood of Jesus. Once we receive these and all return to our seats, I will give the blessing and we will have the communion of the body and blood of Jesus.
May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son,
Yeah, I think I saw some. Good morning, Betty. How are you? Good. I think my mask here for the bathroom trip. Steve, <laughs> let me know if any changes. Or I'll be over with this afternoon. Okay, I'll be there all day. Uh, appreciate it. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened in that song. Thank you for. You skipped a line. We were ready to go to the chorus with you, but then you went back. I think you said, well, that was three, there should be four. And then I look back and you're like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, you only model. messed up once this week. I had three last week. Always, so just saying. I always follow the singer. Wherever the singer goes, yeah. we go. we're used to that. I, I like analyze. Song. Unless I'm singing. No, yeah, we never follow you. <laughs> that, that's you're you're law, I do. Man. I wait. I wait to see what you're going to do. Always. Alternate reality. <laughs> Kevin, Mark. You know what, Jeff? You know a lot of people just sing reality. Jeff writes it. Mark writes it. He's not feeling it. Well, this is the way I'd sing it. Mark writes these songs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, you said this song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 